Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris, Life180. Talk a lot about utilizing whole life insurance uh, to create and utilize it as an opportunity fund. I know for a lot of people, uh, it sounds pretty basic on the surface about, okay, yeah, we're waiting for opportunity. But the question is like, when does that opportunity come? What does the rest of the world look like when that opportunity comes? How do we leverage it? How do we find the opportunities? How do we behave around those opportunities? How do we seek them out? And then ultimately when we do that, how does the whole life insurance policy kind of play uh, the role in our personal financial life to be able to capitalize on them and to be able to ultimately compound the effect of the capitalization on them. And so in this video, what I'm doing is I'm going over all of uh, the components about how to take advantage of market cycles and find opportunity and position yourself for opportunity and not play the keeping up with the Joneses game, but actually implement a strategy that sets you up to be able to do what Warren Buffett says, which is make money when there's blood in the streets. And so I hope you enjoy this. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and click the bell that way you're notified every time I launch a new video. If you have any questions, any comments about anything, comment in the comment section below. If you think that infinite banking is right for you because that's what this is all about, utilizing a properly structured whole life insurance policy to compound the results in your financial life by building the security and preparing for opportunity, that is what this is all about. So if you at the end of this are interested in having a clarity call because you think this may or may not be right for you, but you just have more questions, feel free to go down to the link in the description below, set up your free clarity call, and we will go from there. Enjoy. This is one thing I think is really important to understand. I'm a big believer that the market goes up and it comes down, it goes up, it comes down, and obviously it, it goes up like really like kind of like whatever, not so clean, but you know, for the sake of argument, let's just do that, right? So if we know it goes up and it comes down, and, and it's always trending up, right? So like, is it fair to say like the market, it's gonna trend up in the long run. We know that it's gonna trend up. We know the market's gonna go up because we have inflation on its own is gonna, is gonna drive prices up. So we know that that's just gonna be what it is. Um, that said, you know, you can try to make money when everybody else is making money in these time frames right here, right? But the bottom line is, what does Warren Buffett says? He says, make money when there's blood in the streets because we know people are saving money or we know that people are investing, but they're not saving, right? But they're not saving. So I'm going to saving and then not doing that, right? So what, what I think is better to do is make money when the market's going down. You know, what, if you could make money right here or optimally right at the bottom, although don't try to time the very bottom, but if you can do that, what happens is it's the pendulum effect, right? It's we know that the market you know is going to go up and down and ultimately if the market should stay right in the middle there's this pendulum effect right like where it gets good and it maybe it should swing from here to here right that's the pendulum that's like what the economy should really do but when it gets good people get euphoric and they get overly excited they get overly optimistic and it's like this time it's different and it's getting better and better and better look at the real estate market right now right and it gets so bought where people start putting in houses for $100,000 over asking with no inspection and whatever. And it becomes this like complete delusionary element of, of the, the human psyche when it comes to our money. And it goes so far. And then all of a sudden people have this awakening. It hits a wall and they go, holy crap, this isn't working. So now the pendulum starts to swing and we're experiencing this right now. And it starts to swing back the other way. And then maybe it should go back to the middle it, you know, but the problem is because of how people acted, they got so out of line, they got so leveraged, they did all these things. Now it goes over here. And now what happens? People go, oh, it's going to get bad. Oh, it's getting worse. And now it's like people, people becomes doomsdayers because they, they see all this stuff. And now all of a sudden they think it's going to get too bad, too bad, too bad. It's going to get worse, worse, worse. And, 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 it, and because of human behavior, because life doesn't exist on this little spreadsheet of where it should go, human behavior drives it all the way over. Instead of being ultimate euphoria, where it shouldn't have been, and that becomes ultimate like pandemic or like just completely horrible economic environment and people are super pessimistic and all this stuff about what's going on in the world, right? And so when we look at that, we go, all right, this is where the opportunity is. Anytime it goes past where it should be into there, that's where the buying opportunity is. And, and it hits that because people don't save enough and so what they have to liquidate negatively performing assets, they didn't save money, they have to liquidate their investments just to survive and people sell off 
and this is when you have money. Now, where if you have your money in the market, you can't do that. You can't take advantage of this. This is the power of having an infinite banking policy. If you have your banking policy going up, and when these guys are dropping off here, and your money is keeping going right here, right? At a, at a compounded rate, now you can borrow against it and you can leverage this money and you can buy assets here and those will ride back up. All the while this is riding up, you can use cash flow from this to pay the loan back here, recapitalize the account, and you repeat this anytime there's a market cycle. I have no interest in trying to get big returns when everybody else is getting big, big returns. I'd rather lock in 4% consistently, predictably, protect my money against inflation, look for the opportunities right here and have this money never stop growing and try to repeat this cycle two, three, four times in my life, life will be pretty good at that point in time. That's what it comes down to. And so um, that is ultimately what it's about. And if, you, if this resonates with you, right? If this resonates with you, this is who infinite banking is for, right? You, let's face it, doing this though requires you to become more, requires you to be more intentionally about intentional about how you're handling your money, intentional about accomplishing your goals. And uh, yeah, so that is that.